Look, first off, obvious question. Why did you decide to go again? What did Ross do to make <laughs> you say, yes, I want to play again? Oh, it was a combination of a lot of factors. Um, you know, a lot of critical people involved. My wife, of course, um, Ross, the strength and conditioning coach, my physio. So there's a, a lot of people that were involved in that decision. But um, for me, I made it clear at the end of the season uh, to Ross that I was, um, from a mental point of view, I was in. And then from there, it was about discussing the physical situation with my body and whether, uh, you know, the, the intelligent people around the club that know a lot more about these things than I do felt that I, I could be managed for a season or could get a lot out of me in this season. And um, the conclusion was um, a little bit more strength work, particularly around the calves and, and just general legs in general. Um, and they felt that in combination with a couple of other factors um, would be able to right things. And, um, and we all sat down again and had another chat and, and we all felt that it was a, it was a positive decision to go forward and, and I was more than happy to continue. So you never actually thought, that's it for me. I reckon I'm just about done and dusted. Well, certainly that thought, you know, crossed my mind about the third time I injured myself last year. So it wasn't looking too good in the latter half of the year. Um, but I'd got myself back to a position um, to continue and to come back into the prelim final if we were to progress past the semi-final. And, and so I was physically, mentally ready to go and, and unfortunately that result didn't go the way we all wanted. Um, so I, I felt I was ready to go again and there was no games left and I felt I still had some footy left in me. And so I made that clear to the coaching staff and, and then the rest was a conversation uh, involving a lot of other people. Some people are saying may not be able to play the entire season out or, or all the games. What do you think? Yeah, well, where I stand now, I mean, I've completed a, an entire pre-season. Uh, I haven't missed a beat at all. So I'm probably, um, yeah, as surprised as anyone as, as how well it's been going. So, uh, you know, I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but I've, I feel in super shape at this point in time and really looking forward to the season ahead. And, and really, you know, I'll deal with whatever comes when it comes. But at this point, really confident about the season going forward. Do you set yourself a number of games, Luke? I mean, some blokes would say, oh, I'd like to get through 18, I probably won't travel to GWS, I don't know what your schedule is, but wherever, do you sort of, is that body management, man management? Yeah, there was a bit of a discussion about that last year, but I think on the back of how well my pre-season has gone personally, it's really lets us play footy, you know, and I don't really like that philosophy, and certainly, you know, how the team's performing and how I'm performing, of course, will play a role in whether I play all the games through the year. Um, but at this point in time, I'm not looking further than, you know, probably the first four weeks. I really want to play some really good football in the first month and then reassess from there. But I'm not really thinking about a figure or a number of games. Um, but I certainly don't make those decisions anyway. That's for the coach. When you say, let us play footy, which is a, a, your, your, your view, which is great. As a veteran of the game and a bloke who's probably a, stu a student of the game as a whole, has it changed because of, we're talking today, the Essendon, decision being handed down, what happened to place at Collingwood, what's happened at your own club, what's happened off the field, has, has footy changed and does it disappoint you the way the game's gone, there's no longer four premiership points in the odd hamstring injury? Um, you're talking about, you I in general, how you perceive football, football it's yeah. no longer, we're seeing so much before the season's even started, yeah, right. which okay. is off field a lot of it, you're very much, let's just play the game. Yeah, well look, I mean it's, I think there's been so much going on off the field in the last few months that yeah, I'm certainly really excited to, to play some football. I think everyone in the AFL community and the broader community are looking forward to the season starting. Um, so, yeah, as far as the off-field stuff is concerned, you know, we understand that, um, you know, there's a process that needs to be undertaken with all those things, and, and these things take longer. I'm sure, particularly the, with the Essendon saga, of course, it's taken a long time, and everyone would certainly like to see a resolution there. Um, but, you know, we're a, a few days out from round one, and it's, it's a very exciting time to be you know, around, around a football club and, and I'm sure the wider community are, are thrilled that we're going to you know, see a bounce here in a couple of days time. Look, um, just getting back, can I just one more thing? That, was it nice for Ross to say, hey mate, we need you, I want you to go on. Is it nice to get that from someone? Ross is a pretty hard man. I'm sure if he thought you were getting towards the end, he'd tell you. Was that a yeah, thing to you? Of course it is. I mean, he's the senior coach and you know, we had a very frank discussion at the end of the year. I said, I'm keen to continue, but you know, the final decision, of course, rests with you. And, and if you, you've you seen me play enough football and if you feel that at uh, my fittest and ablest that I'm still able to compete at this level, then you let me know. And if not, then I'll walk away.
So, so have you done anything different this pre-season then? Why do you think you've been able to be so successful in pre-season? Is there a magic, something you've Yeah, done? well, I, I don't think it's, I mean, there's always an element of luck, I think, with these things, but for the most part, you know, I alluded to earlier, there's been a real uh, focus on the strength side of things, uh, particularly the calf strength and endurance. Um, and just an overall, yeah, management through pre-season, I've probably done 80 to 90% of all the work um, compared to the majority of the group. So, um, yeah, not a lot changed outside of just a really good focus on strength, particularly maintaining that strength through the year. As the games start, you find, you know, on the back of games, you might miss a few strength sessions depending on how sore you are, etc. So there's been a real focus this year that that strength not drop away at all when the games begin, um, and hopefully, yeah, that will keep the body together. And how, how much mentally? Sorry, how much mentally has it been about? It's the last big push, the last chance to win a flag or to play in a you know premiership. For me personally. For you personally. Yeah. yeah well, it's again, you know, I've, I've played football for so long. It's you know, it would certainly be nice, but um, at this point. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on playing some footy, really, it's as simple as that. I've got, um, you know, I, I'm not going to, probably this time last year I was thinking about retiring, but, you know, I I'm not saying anything at this point and I certainly, my wife was very disappointed when I f flipped and changed my decision last year, but, you know, at this point in time I'm, I'm just going to play football and see what comes and I'm really excited about this group and, and particularly the young players coming through and uh, I look forward to seeing what we can do. The strength work is that the reason or the reason you've identified why perhaps you've been vulnerable to soft tissues in the back half of the season yeah possibly yeah there, there seemed to be a little bit of a decline in, in the strength work through the season on the back of you know the, the bumps and the knocks that you get in games and having to recover from them and not being able to get as much strength work in in the week between games and you, you see sort of a gradual decline in the strength over the season so that was identified as one possible cause um, and so yeah that's been looked at pretty closely yeah. So the wife was disappointed you did that flipped from retiring to playing on. You have not consulted her this year? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, us, we sort of tried to have a chat at the start of the year, but she doesn't believe me anymore because uh, she thought I'd retire three or four years ago. So we're just going to leave it and see what happens. Yeah. Pulled out like huge task first up. Uh, NAB challenge, we, we don't know whether it's like dancing with your sister. We don't exactly know how serious everyone was and what they played with. But it looked like it got more serious last week, the third round of NAB challenge. Huge benchmark to start the season for Fremantle and Port Adelaide. What are you expecting? Yeah, it's really exciting. We, I think our first few rounds are against some of the quality sides from last year. So we start the season with a bang. Um, you know, it'd be good to show, demonstrate where we're at um, as a football team. I think everyone at this point in time thinks they're gonna, gonna win it and is super fit and excited and we're no different, but then the real business starts and we'll see you know, who's been kidding themselves and who's, who's a genuine contender. So to start against Port Adelaide, a, a quality outfit, um, you know, I think we go to Geelong the second week and Sydney a few weeks after that. So it's, it's gonna be a, a big, strong start for our year, but um, we look forward to it. Luke, a few injuries and Kent Zach and Alex obviously not gonna play round one. Do you feel as though Port Adelaide they're an okay side not to be as tall um, down back? Yeah, I think we um, were able to handle their tools to an extent last year, um, given that we had a couple of keys missing last year in, in, in the final and also I think round 21 as well. So um, yeah, I think we're able to contain it as long as you know the pressure on the ball is outstanding and, and we always um, look to our midfield to get the game, get game going and win the ball and get it going in our direction. If, if that is going well, then we'll be a better place to defend. Um, but if you know, we're in some trouble in the midfield and they're winning it too easily and coming out too easily. It doesn't matter what defence you have, you're going to be under pressure. Do you expect to take Schultz? Most likely, yeah. Schultz or, or Butcher um, was in some good form. I think he kicked five in the NAB Cup last week or a couple of weeks ago. So they've got some quality tools there. Um, yeah, the Paddy Ryder one, we'll see how that pans out. And, um, and of course, their army of smalls are uh, super talented. So we're going to have our work cut out for us, no doubt. You've always, your pace has always been a real asset of yours and the way the game's going has become more of that running game. Pace-wise, have you, in your seasoned career, how is your pace and all that sort of stuff? Because you would think you pretty much suit the way the game's going with the way you run freely. Yeah, I'm always keen to check um, my GPS results. Uh, I check in with our strength and conditioning coach every so often just to see how the pace is going and he assures me it's still there. So. Um, yeah, thankfully, you know, I've got myself to a position where I'm fit and strong and apparently still fast, so hopefully that will um, allow me to keep up with the demands of the game.
So if Ryder and Monfries don't play when you come up against them, uh, against Port, do you think that's a big advantage to you guys, particularly if Ryder doesn't play? Yeah, he's a, he's a quality player, of course. Um, but I think you know they've got quality talls, they've got quality smalls. You know they're going to have a they've got a very powerful forward line, and so regardless of what comes, it's going to be a challenge. Um, so if if they haven't if they're not as tall, we know that their smalls are very dangerous. Um, but certainly if yeah, Ryder plays, it will stretch us a bit. But again, I, I point to the you know what's happening up the ground and how we're winning the ball and, and those sorts of things has been probably the critical um, issue around how we go defensively. And can I just ask you about the AFL drug testing regime? Looks like there's a push back now to being more stringent testing and that maybe the players' associations had too much power and it's been too, too generous, I suppose, if you want to say that, towards the players. And that's why we're having these tests, these uh, positives now. As a senior player, what do you think about that? Do you, would you, how would you feel if they tightened it up again? Yeah, I th look, I, as a, I mean, I, I totally support the PA and, and what they're doing there. Um, but you know, ultimately, there's a situation in elite sport at the moment where um, you know, drug culture, whatever you want to call it, is, is seems to be rife. And you know, I think it's it's mostly around the education um, that we need to continue to to push forward with. And I know certainly at our club. We have really strong protocols in place, but at the end of the day, you're not always going to get 100% compliance. Um, we've seen that, you know, across the AFL and, and um, the last few years. So yeah, look, it's, a, it's an issue, but I think everyone's just trying to do their best to, to right it, and we want to, um, you know, clean up, you know, Australian sport as, as quickly as possible and, and get back to the focus of yeah, playing good football. Looking forward to the season. Um, Ryan, have you spent much time with him? Yes. Yeah, I mean, understandably, he's he's uh, under a bit of duress, um, uh, but you know he's he's been dealing with it as best he can, and the, and the playing group have been supporting him. And you know he knows he's got to go through this process, and um, you know, and we'll we'll deal with the result when it comes. But at this point, he's training with us. He's you know we're all around him, and uh, I think it's great that he's still here and involved with everyone. How do you feel that he has to miss four or five weeks before they actually even make a decision? Yeah, it's, it's disappointing for him, it's disappointing for the team. Um, he's a quality player, we, we'd like to have him playing for us. Um, but, you know, those, those things happen and, and he has to deal with the consequences. Pre-season predictions, we all want to pre-season predict uh, eights and finalists and rising stars and Brownlow medalists. A lot of good judges say Nat Fife is a Brownlow medal deserving Brownlow uh, favourite, one of the second in the voting last year. Just tell us about him and what we're expecting from him, how he can be even better than he was last year. Is he scary good to play with? Yeah, yeah, he really is. Uh, and you know, he's always been great, you know, from the moment he first arrived at the club, his talent was extraordinary. So we're, we're really excited as to what he can do for us this year. He's, he seems to be even stronger this year, if that's possible. Um, he continually works on his skills and his kicking as well. Um, but, you know, I think the aerial stuff is his greatest feature. And, um, you know, he's such a weapon in that he can win the contested ball in the midfield and then he can go forward and take those strong marks and kick goals. So he's very difficult player to match up on and, and we're excited that he plays for us. Um, but yeah, he'll certainly work in with David Mundy and you know, Lockie Neal and, and the other guys that go through there to give us our best chance.